Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of September 18, 2024. It's 6 p.m. This meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone int intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. So call the meeting to order. Um, first up is uh, public a comment, uh, approximately 20 minutes with a two minute maximum per person if anyone has anything they'd like to discuss. Please come up and speak into the mic, identify yourself. Uh, anyone online? All right, well, it looks like there's no comment at the moment. And so, um, while we wait for Chief Pachorek, um, I would suggest that we handle the, uh, the minutes. Yep. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Blake, you, you I did. Well. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes for September 11th, uh, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Helchi, aye. Okay. Um, what's the next thing that we could do? Um, Well, do we have Valerie here tonight? To go I'm not the sure. Vacancy notice? Or do you want public to that health is. Oh, okay. Oh, Chief's here. He is here. Look at that. Just in time. Come on up. Yeah, it looked quick on the agenda. I thought I was on at like 620, you so are. I didn't rush. You are. We could also, yeah, if he's not ready, we can Yeah, we didn't have any comment tonight, so. We can get Perfect. you in, in and out. So you can enjoy your night. No problem. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for coming all the way here. So, tell us what we're up against. So I think most read the Greenfield Recorder. Uh, there was complaints filed with the uh, Department of, of Environmental Protection relative to our storm re debris removal from last year. Uh, DEP came in, did a couple visits, one with us present, one without us present, and they basically told us that we're in violation of a couple wetland laws because some of the material that we had taken out of drainage ways and stream beds were put within the 100 foot buffer and that material needs to be taken out. We all know that we did such extensive work in, uh, in Old Deerfield last year that the areas that it needs to come out are pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. So luckily Deerfield Academy offered to do one of the four areas across from Richardson's Candy Kitchen. And uh, folks will actually see that work start Friday morning. So they're gonna be out there Friday. The DEP signs should be up. And uh, we have the three other locations that we need to get into and take care of the work. One is Hawks Road. Hawks Road is looking to be about a day long. Uh, one is called Fuller Swamp Brook, which is southwest of Bittersweet on five and 10. And that's looking anywhere from three to five days. And then the North Meadows where we opened up substantial uh, drainage where a lot of people saw the gas company repairing a gas line and moving the gas line because mm -hmm. the water comes down off that hill, off of Keats, Eroding. so bad. Yeah, that area is looking to be anywhere from two to four weeks, depending on how much material DEP would like taken out of there. So did the gas line, they moved that further into five and 10, right? They did. Yeah. That was actually exposed during the 2023 storms, yep. which is a, a major deal. That's a 10 inch pressurized gas main. Right. And if that, that goes, we lose gas for the entire region. Right. Yeah. Who's this stranger? Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. It's good to see oh, your thanks. face again. Nice to have good you here. 
So we do have the four areas. We have Hawks Road, that's so one day job. It's about like six small piles of rock, not a big deal. Uh, we have the west side of Richardson's Candy Kitchen, which actually wasn't the July of 23 storms, that's the July of 21 yeah. storms. You'll right. all remember that mm -hmm. uh, when we opened that up. Yep. And Fuller Swamp Brook is southwest of Bitter Street. It's that additional drainage that comes down from the, uh, the Eagle Brook side. Mm -hmm. And then we have the North Meadows. And we need to get in there for, I'm estimating, anywhere from about three to five weeks. So as part of my recommendation, I recommended that we bring Kevin Scarborough back as our project manager and representative to DEP. So we have somebody there that's got boots on the ground. As part of the project, the areas that we're in, we, uh, we actually need to bring in track trucks because of the soil is unstable in that area and you're going actually through the wetlands. So you need those wide tracks to stabilize the vehicle so they don't sink into the, uh, mm -hmm. the area and damage it worse and get stuck and create a nightmare. Yeah. Those are pretty expensive. So we got the three quotes on those. Um, I looked into the storm damage account and I think I, I sent the select board, all including Christopher and Greg, all estimates. Uh, I believe we had, if memory serves correct, about 43,000 left in the storm damage account. And in research with Brenda, if the select board would be so inclined as to designate the remainder of the ARPA funds that are undesignated, the $85,000, I think that we are currently within budget to take all that material out of there and get back in compliance with DEP. So if the board's inclined, I would recommend that uh, you make a motion to appoint Kevin, the special projects manager, and that we vote to utilize the remainder of the undesignated ARPA funds and there's a couple track truck operators that I put in here to, uh, to be appointed should the board decide to do so. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Did we, have a, we didn't have a spreadsheet, did we? No, no, no it, it was, was all in a it Word was in document. The paragraph, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I thought. Yeah, you want fresh copies? No, I, I got and one got, here. I'm good. Okay. Got, yeah. And we have pictures too. <laughs> so. I don't know if it would be worth the, are you, would you be able to put up the, the photographs of the areas that are going to be working, like just for people online yeah. and, the, and the, in the audience here, just quickly. So the great part is, is Kevin and I opened up um, areas that had problems for many, many years, and I think we've resolved. Oh a lot of water issues up there we've yeah, in june different. and july this year early july until we hit this most re recent slight drought we had some pretty good mm. two three right. inch did. like deluges and not even a hiccup up there yeah. which is good yeah yeah and i saw you um along greenfield road in front of uh, bitter i mean richardson's today yep. were you opening up uh uh, actually, what we're doing is we were doing the putting up the signs. Oh, the, the signs. DMP signs. Okay, good. Uh, we weren't allowed to do any work until those were up. Um, those were yeah. uh, acquired through Greenfield, and um, the guys came in and we showed them where to put them in, and we installed those today. What right. do the signs say? They say uh, basically it just shows a DEP number. Okay. Um, so that way, that that is the requirement. Mm -hmm. So that way, if somebody has an issue with what is what's happening in there, they, they can, can look at that. They can call DEP. They can say, "This is the number I'm reading off the sign. What's going on?" Yeah. And they'll say, "This is what's happening," and everything is uh, we're, documented. We're doing, we're, everything is documented. We're doing what we're yep. supposed to be doing. So it, it's more of hopefully to try and slow down some of the phone calls too. So great. Yeah, our DP, DEP rep has been nothing but reasonable. Mm. Yeah, very, very reasonable. Extremely. And a lot of the, uh, the site work will be situational dependent on scene. When Kevin meets with, uh, with DEP multiple times a week, they'll kind of take a walk forward, one, two, 300 feet, 400 feet, and go, yes, 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 no, 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 leave it. If, uh, if there's some piled material and there's already habitat life in there, they're going to leave it. If there's other materials that are kind of right. blocking discharge of wetlands or kind of filling in wetlands, they're going to say, hey, take, take, take this take area out. out. Right. So they're going to walk it with Kevin and Good. we're going to go through each and every area as we move forward a few days in advance. Yep. I know so. that I was with you on this one, John, when you were with DEP on one of the trips. Yep. Um, did you guys figure out where this was going to end up once you get it out of there? I mean, I know that Deerfield Academy was going to take some of it. And is there any other place that 
or any of the, the farmers that would the materials would, yeah that, yeah that'd be correct yeah we have some low spots um that savage is gonna be looking at we have some low spots that uh, um uh, uh god who's probably is that north north meadows yes winsky he has winskies um so there's low spots and then within there um as long as D pieces we, we need to be within 100 feet or more than 100 feet away but technically um because mm -hmm. it is farm field um we did get a uh email back stating that we're they would be exempt from it so but realistically we're all going to be within uh more than 100 feet away um right. i did meet with yop um down at yeah. gardens today because technically we'd be traveling through part of his property right uh, we got our rights of back access um so all of our dotting our i's crossing our t's good making sure that all that all that's taken care of um explain to him exactly what we're gonna be doing in that area it's going to be a little tight for a little while because we're not sure how long it's going to be before they're going to start taking some of the potatoes out but um at this point working with yop he made it accessible at any point in time so he is he is bending over backwards for us which is was kind of nice good 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 welcome chris we started early on you <laughs> you're not late <laughs> yeah, the, you're not late <laughs> the farmers have been fantastic uh for those that don't know i know the select board's been in the loop because i send them constant emails but for the folks at home they don't know jay savage already took out a lot of the material in the north meadows earlier this year mm -hmm. he's already used it on the farm fields he's been growing potatoes in it it's amazing material oh, it's good it's uh, good soil yeah, it, it's not problematic for farmers at all. So the farmers have been amazing for the North Meadows. Yep. The uh, Fuller Swamp Brook, that material is going to go to the transfer station mm -hmm. as it has a lot of rock in it, a lot of debris that came off the mountainside, and right. it's not something that we want to put in farm fields. Right. So that will be trucked off site to the transfer station. Uh, Chris has already been working at the transfer station and made substantial room in there, which is great. Good. So. We've just been working together as a trio to make this happen in the most cost-effective manner we can for the residents. So, Chief, we've got uh, some pictures, so... Sure. I think this is... The first one's the Richardson's area, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yeah, so at the end of this one, you will still see a couple piles out there. Uh, some of those piles have a lot of habitat and life in them. Right. Um, but some of the other areas that are just elevated where we took the material and placed it in there, it will be taken out. Yeah. So the, uh, the town administration offices may start to get phone calls Friday because when we start working close to five and 10, obviously people get nervous and they start to call. So hopefully yeah. the DEP number will quell a lot of it. Yep. They're going to be expecting calls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I, you want a motion for the uh, undesignated ARPA? Or do you want? You have sure, sure. I mean, we're just going to yeah, let him sure. just talk through this and then we'll do Sure. That. So if you look at the map on the right, you'll see SS and a little pond area. Just above that is Bittersweet. Mm -hmm. um, so this is actually south of Bittersweet. There's a culvert that crosses 5 and 10. So that entire area is handled through two culverts. Mm -hmm. One is at Richardson's Candy Kitchen and one is just south of Bittersweet. This one just south of Bittersweet was totally clogged up. We got in there. We opened the entire section up and... The, uh, the farmers have worked with us in that region as well. DEP wants us to take that down a few feet because it is a little high within that 100-foot boundary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So Kevin and I are currently estimating this and in, in Chris at anywhere from three to five days. The hope is under three days, but we'll see. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, this is about a 500-foot run. It's about 300 feet south, 200 to the west. Yep. Hawks Road, hard. you see a long red line that's not a big deal that's some of the material we take we took out of there but it's actually um what do we call it kevin there's peat six, moss peat. yeah there's six piles yeah there's uh there's so there's a bunch of peat moss that we took out up there that we're just going to place wetland seed in and we're actually not going to take that material out when we walked it with dep one of the dep representatives the head of wetland almost went up to his waist yeah so he Deep realized stuff. that it was not reasonable to get in there we'd be destroying more by taking anything out but what we did do is there was a rock cut in there blasted out many 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 years ago I remember that probably 40 50 80 100 yeah. years ago that is an old county road right so that rock cut is a drainage and little by little over the years the shale has kind of just started to fall and yeah. that was cleaned out so what chris is talking about is there's about six piles of rock in there they're, they're maybe three three yeah. and a half feet high they're mm -hmm. only three four feet wide they're relatively small so 
We should be able to get in there in one day and take those six piles out, spread the wetland seed that they've asked for, and Hawks Road is done in a day. Not a big deal. All right. And the large one. Yep. The North Meadows. The North Meadows was a long run. Um, you can see over the years the actual, when we dug down to restore that and dig out all the storm debris materials, you actually can see the different layers of sedimentation in there from storms over the years by different colors, which was actually very neat to look at. Um, Jay Savage has already taken out over a thousand feet up there. What we've got to do is start all the way down near Old Main Street, right on that corner. Yep. And we're going to work our way backwards right up north this and way. see which ones we leave, which ones we take out, yep. and at what point DEP is satisfied. We have to do a little work on the east side as well. So right before we hit Old Main Street, we had to switch over because it, it's so um, entrenched in wetlands in there to work on a higher ground that we had to actually take the, the mini excavator and switch to the east side, even though you're still on the west side of 5 and 10, the east side of that stream bed. Right. And there's just a tad bit of material over there. So that's why you see the two red lines. Yeah. Yep. And you know, my understanding is that you guys are going to be seeding and strawing as you go, uh, as, as you as get you approval from DEP, or are you going to yep. just do it in there? No, they are already approved that. Yes, yeah, DEP's in, in full consent that they're going to walk it a few days in advance with Chris and Kevin and say, this is the grade I want, make it to surrounding grade. They're yep. going to pre-agree ab about that. As we take the material out, at the end of every day, the straw machine weighs about 1,000 pounds. So the mini excavator is going to tow that so we're not getting back into each area two, three, four, five days later in backtracking. Right. So as we take the material out, we're immediately going to seed it with wetland seed, and then we're going to put the one-inch straw on it that's required. So at the end of every day, there should be seed down, straw down, and we move the machines out of the way. Okay. If the machine is in there and you're dragging that thing in there with it, is there any work that you have to do to smooth any of that over where the tracks of the vehicle of the excavator and the other machine are in there or that's all smooth well, gonna, where they want it that, that's all going to have to be smooth we're going to start and go out to that area smooth our way out to that area to okay. start working yeah and then work our way out okay yep. we're actually going to work backwards so we're going to start yeah. at the end point yeah and then work our way backwards so those track machines will be behind mike with the excavator he'll take the material out he'll turn around he'll dump it in the track machine and we're actually just going to put the, the uh, grass, um, the hay spreader, what's it called, the blower, and that will be, yeah, the mulcher will be right on the back side, and we'll tow it along as we go. That's the way it's a one-time one event. You know, and, and working with, with Pete and Amy at um, the inspections office in CONCOM, we've already set up a, um, a form that needs to be filled out on a daily basis, uh, they're going to be quantities. Uh, everything's going to be dotting our I's, crossing our T's, making sure everything's done properly, taking photos of everything, um, and, every, and everything's going to be uploaded into a file. If you brought it to you, it'll be flat files. That way, nothing can be changed. Um, then it'll just be part of our documentation. So. so, one of the other things I've got a question for, and again, it's because I don't. Some of this I don't understand, but. This was done during an emergency situation, correct? Yes. Yep. And the money, the funds that were used were mostly from the state that were mm -hmm. used for this type of thing. Because DEP is putting this order in place, and it was a state emergency setup that we had, there was, is there, there was no venue that you could go back to to see if there was any money available to actually, you know, uh, I help wish. with this process? Yeah. I wish. I, I reached out to our legislative delegation. The problem is I think that ship has long sailed. Okay. They said the appetite in Boston for additional storm uh, damage relief was not there. So I think Boston's already moved on. They said, hey, we've done as much as we could with the $1.58 million. Yeah. Um, the only, I guess, comfort I can give the residents is I think on the back side of this, if somebody truly did an analysis... <laughs> We did anywhere from probably tw 10 to $20 million worth of work done mm -hmm. for about $600,000 of taxpayer money. Yeah, so work. the cost-benefit analysis on the flip side, we got a dramatic amount of work done and drainage opened like it used to be it 50 to 70 years ago. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we've had no issues this year at all yeah. before I mean, in rainstorms. 
the bad side is complaints came into DEP and we left material there thinking we were doing the right thing actually creating what we thought was an area that was stable where we could maintain this permanently mm -hmm. and DEP and including our own wetland engineer I literally called him afterwards and he said yeah no uh, US Army Corps DEP doesn't like that because what it does is when you create that high point it channels the water when the water's channeled it can't flood and spread its wings into the bank and hit recharge areas and slow down the more you channelize water the more damage you're going to have in your next event mm -hmm. and I'm like okay so they went through many different reasons why what we thought we were doing was creating a high point that was dry that was reasonable that was fair to put a mini excavator in and permanently maintain it in a cost-effective manner so the residents never went through this again right. so now we're trying to strike that fine middle balance yep yep and uh, you know if you want to see anybody who's Probably the happiest person in town is Kathy Williams <laughs> and Richardson's. Richardson's Candy yeah. Kitchen. She, yeah, she, she drove by even after major rain events last fall, uh, October, November, mm -hmm. even December, Chris, we saw her out there, and she literally had post-traumatic stress. She drove up for a three, three and a half inch rain event in December at five o'clock in the morning to check on her parents' house and check on the store, and she's like, John, I can't believe it. Like, yeah. the, the pipe is a quarter way full. It's very nice. Yeah, that's amazing. Good yeah. job. Yep. And isn't there there's something in the works to redo that pipe again, or is there? There's engineering numbers mm -hmm. for two different culverts for both of those, yeah. South of Bittersweet and Richardson's. There's engineering numbers assigned to upsize those. Yeah, they're whether they turn into massive culverts, uh, small bridges, open bottom culverts, that's all up to DOT. That area of roadway is due up to be uh, reconstructed in the next five years. Okay. Yep. And it's that's good because it's a state-funded project at that right, point. Right, right. And the, yep. Our infrastructure is ready to marry up with that infrastructure. And, and speaking of bridges, let's, uh, let's at least talk to the residents for 30 seconds. North mm -hmm. Main Street yep. was kicked back by Boston for re-engineering designs to Northampton two weeks ago. Yep. Northampton was looking at about a three-week turnaround to resubmit those to Boston for DOT approval. When Mass DOT approves them in Boston, it will then go to the rail to be approved, at which point the emergency contractor, the emergency bridge repair company, has already been giving the templates to start ordering parts. My hope is in November or December, we will start to see movement on that bridge, and I am told that it is not a long project to fix. Good. But I've been proven wrong many times before. Mm. Yep. Yeah. We all have. But no, at least there's movement on it. Mm -hmm. That's not indefinite. So that's they've been really amazing. Good. They've, yep. yep, they've been right on top of this. Are they looking at putting back in a wood deck? That's the only I way they so. can do it currently. Right. I believe there's seven left in the state. The good side of it is the entire decking will be brand new, right. which means they are going to elevate the tonnage. So we have the possibility of actually allowing buses back over the bridge again, ambulances, possibly fire trucks as well. Hopefully not trailer trucks, but right. yeah, we'll see what they ultimately rate it on the backside. Yeah. I think we really do have to work on this relatively quickly because the residents on North Main Street kind of like a cul-de-sac. I know they do. <laughs> I know they do. They'll get used to it. For those that don't have kids in the high school, you, uh, yeah. you probably don't see me. For kids that are, for people that do, every single morning I've been out at the high school because otherwise at 100% gridlocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, with 191 school choice kids at Frontier and the buses 90% empty from our own kids. Yep. A lot of cars. Yep. yep. Well, so I'll take a motion. I'll Trevor. make a motion to approve the um, uh, designation of the undesignated uh, remaining ARPA funds at $85,000 to this project. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Helchi, I. And then the, um, I think the remaining, and then I would make a motion to spend the remaining um, money from the emergency funds, which we have in in house already, um, which is 22 or something. Uh, uh, 40, 40, 40, oh, excuse yeah. me, 43,000 um, for the project and hopefully keep as much of it as we can. Agreed. But Second. at least we'll have that, have that money ready. Yeah, any further discussion? No. Nope. None, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hill, G.I. I want to thank you guys and thank you, Kevin, for helping. Chris, thank you, Chris, for all your work. You've been doing great. So 
For administrative purposes, would you guys please make a motion to appoint Kevin the project's manager yes. at $75 an hour, and then the three track operators in addition to any town employee will be Dave Gendron, um, William Rakevitz, uh, most known as Rocky, and Raymond Berniski. And I'll make that motion uh, according to what we just heard from Chief Thank Pichurik. You. Sec sec yeah, go ahead. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So Kevin, you thought you were getting away, but you're yeah. back. These, these members are uh, special uh, municipal employees, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Anything else why, uh, why we're here? No, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you taking the time to come all the way back and be here in person. Yeah, no problem. Great. I want to wanna thank Chris. I think the DPW is out on Eastern and Graves. They've been. Yeah, I took yep. a drive through. Uh, and I guess you I, came back the next day and helped some people with their driveways. And yeah. yeah. I in anticipated a few calls. I put a couple of fires out before the calls, but yeah. yeah. Well, I've okay. got you, Chris. Uh, there was one culvert underneath Graves around 22, uh, excuse me, underneath Easton around 22 that yeah. rumor has it's plugged. We may have a blaster truck or something to blow that out. We were thinking about doing that this yeah, fall, maybe. Exactly. We're going to actually uh, appreciate that. Yeah, we'll Where does it come out the other side? Is it way... I mean that seems long because I don't I see it on one side but part of that um, Eastern Ave ditch. Oh, all the way out to there. So that's a long run because I looked at it tonight and I'm, I saw one side but at Eastern, but I'm like, well, where does it go? It must go all the way to that ditch. That's a does long it, haul. Does it split properties? No. Does it go down in between or is it? Uh, I don't know. I think it's I don't on think one it does. property. I think it is on just one on property. One? Yeah. yeah. On just one property. Yeah. yeah. It's that. that. Uh, recharge area then once that comes up high enough then it goes across and eventually makes its way to to the brook to the brook yeah which yeah. goes between graves and, and eastern yeah um, you know, yeah i think um, fire station. Some i think when pete law and i were out there i think with i don't know if it was with you chris or if we were maybe we were there alone yeah. but he went down and said yeah it's like looks like it's two-thirds silted up or something so the um yeah the ditch some of it's you know some people have it clean and mowed right. you know and others is a bunch of trees and would right. maybe put a brush brush hog down there while it's dry but i don't know so you one know, of the things that chris things to do and i are entertaining doing was getting uh one of our old e engineers for wetlands involved again and modifying our bundled notice of intent with the conservation commission mm -hmm. we are one of only three communities in the state that has a bundled noi that allows us to go in and do maintenance thanks to kevin during uh, his tenure but we want to modify that and add that area to it and that way when we get a good solid um frost in the ground chris has offered to put their mini excavator in there and maintain the grades and take down what needs to be in accordance with a maintenance agreement in that bundled noi yeah so Ultimately, we've got to reach out to a wetland engineer, get them involved. We've got to do a hearing with Conservation Commission and ask for a modification of the NOI. And hopefully that way this winter, Chris can get in there and we can do some maintenance work in there and make the residents happy. Okay. Early winter. Early yeah. winter. Early. Yeah. And nobody told the police chief that wetlands and water were my problem. <laughs> just, just, so you're quite, just so you're aware, that, that section right there, that drainage, yeah. um, is actually a deeded uh, drainage to the town correct so it's not something where the town is going in or DPW or anybody else is going in on somebody else's property so technically all of that is is a and it's 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 a requirement so, okay. of the town yeah, so and, and, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yep yep great well okay. thank you guys appreciate it thank you Good all right to see thank you, all. you thank you guys are we taking quick questions what do you think from the from the finance chair, yes. All right. Is the, is the work article associated with this work now going to be passed over? The question was: Is the warrant article associated with this work going to be passed over? I believe um, so because there isn't any public funding going in. That yeah, hasn't I believe. Been. We're still uh, yeah working on. There's there's another option, uh, another warrant article that's we're not sure we're going to need as well. Which is, are, do we have any bills that were from a previous fiscal year that need to be paid? But um, when Brenda gets back, we'll clarify that. So, yeah. So the, um, the finance committee meeting tomorrow evening is only about this article, so I'm going to cancel the finance. Oh, yeah, I would, I would do that, yeah, because we have the funny money with So you've already dealt with CPC and you've dealt with other things that are in the warrant? That's in a different meeting. Oh, yep. okay. Was only this article because Chief wasn't available. Gotcha. Ah, good. All right. Yep. 
No, we're good. Thank you. Isn't it nice not to have to go to a meeting? <laughs> Free up a night. <laughs> All right. Um, is Valerie Bird here? I don't know if she's here. What time is it? I am. Oh, I'm hey. here. Hey, Valerie. Excellent. Hi, Valerie. Hi. So, um, as you know, we've been looking for another health agent, and it's been quite challenging finding a health agent that meets all the qualifications that the website asks for. Yep. Um, we've had a number of uh, resumes, applications that um, have some parts of what we're looking for, but not the entire package. So what Richard and I were, were talking and we spoke with, um, with Chris that it would be best to, to split the job as it is now. Um, some time ago, maybe a couple months ago, the board decided to go with one full-time agent thinking that and offer full-time hours that that would be um, attractive, but yeah. we don't, we just don't have the application pool. It's right. just not there. So we'd like to go with, we'd like to split the job as it is now, have one person handle the food and the other person would handle the septic and we'll have to figure out about the housing. So what we were thinking that if, if we could re-advertise that as such and actually going forward, I actually spoke to somebody today that might be interested in doing just the septic and oh. he has the qualification. So he's, he's thinking it over okay. and he'll get back to me. And if, if that's something that we could look at, we would s certainly um, accept his resume and possibly interview him. Okay. Um, um, I don't know, Chris, did you have any other ideas? No, I, th I think that was a good solution. The only other thing I would mention is uh, Dick Kalashevsky brought up the possibility of collaborating with the, the Foothills uh, Health District. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I believe they have someone there as well. Um, but no, I, I like Val's approach on this. And what would we need to do vis-a-vis um, -vis putting out um, a different kind of advertisement? We need a different vacancy notice, right? Yep. And a job description? Yep. So I, I would work with Val to update that vacancy notice and uh, the job description as well. And would, that, would, would we want to send that through personnel as well? Do we need to? Uh, I, I'll check. <laughs> okay. Just wondered. What, I know they approved it all together, but... Yeah. Right. It's separate if they wanted to look at that too. And I think Val had talked about um, another possible approach. If we find somebody who's willing, who who comes on as like either the the sewer portion of the 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 health agent or the food inspection, and they don't have the other credentials, we could conceivably look at getting them training so they could do the full pantheon of things. Although. Um, I guess those uh, those people with all those talents are in, in very high demand. Um, so, but yeah, that, 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 that's that is the way it looks. Um, it seems like people just move around. Yeah, you know, not where it's not only us. It's not only Deerfield. It's the Foothills is looking for an inspector. Greenfield is looking for an inspector. East Hampton is looking for an inspector. So we're in competition with all these other towns. Yeah. But whoever whoever we find, whether it's a food person or a septic person, I, I would stay on to help them train to meet all the credentials. And I just don't want to work full time. <laughs> yep. I we appreciate you <laughs> hanging on with us, Val. We really do. You've been wonderful. All right. Well, um, yeah. Any, anything else to report, Valerie? Um, I think that that's all I have. You you got my uh, decibel readings on Treehouse. I don't yes. think this is probably not the meeting to discuss that, and we can talk about that in the future. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. By the way, appreciate yep. it. Um, okay. Thank as, you. As usual, thank Valerie. You. Great job. Yep. Appreciate Thanks. that work. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. Um, <clears throat> One thing occurred to me is that maybe we can get Franklin Tech to start a, you know, health agent just thinking that. health agent uh, training program for, you know, high schoolers come out. Uh, yeah, they'd be in high demand. We've I mean, been having huge luck. You know, Eric at the wastewater treatment has been yeah. stealing, you know, some kids and training them up, and they've been great. They've yeah, been great at the sewer plant. Yeah. So, anyway, well, yep. Over to you, Christopher, as your. Uh, Sure, I'll, I'll provide a brief update. I believe uh, two members of the select board were at the CCI meeting the other night, and then Trevor, I don't think you were. No, it was um, not. So I'll, I'll, but I'll keep it brief here. Uh, a few updates. Uh, Tilton Library, we submitted an Amelia Peabody uh, 
uh, charitable fund grant that's for $100,000 to support their capital campaign. Next step is to look at Mass Cultural Council. Uh, they have a facilities fund that could potentially fund some of the elements that were not included in that base bid when that was awarded uh, this spring. So that's the next step on that project. Okay. Um, 1888 building, obviously we had a public meeting the other night. Uh, I think it was really well attended. I thought yep. we got some great feedback. Yep. Um, and the, the committee for that, uh, the advisory committee is gonna be meeting on Friday um, to discuss uh, you know, how the meeting went and, and talk to the architect about you know, what we need to come back with to show um, you know, what changes might be possible based on the feedback that we heard. Okay. Um, our next meeting for that, uh, the next public meeting is going to be on October 1st, and, and we'll be sending out details. Uh, Leary Lot, uh, you know, the construction is proceeding apace. Uh, FHWA is going to be stopping by at some point, either this week or next, for a site visit. Um, but uh, nothing else to report. They're moving right along. Yeah. Uh, the, the tree box filters, I think, that were <laughs> part of the project, um, they're, they've been slightly relocated into the, the more There's central area. The <laughs> I don't think every, <laughs> Those things move around a lot. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's been the only uh, mm -hmm. you know, substantial. And actually, yeah. uh, fortunately, our OPM is and has been working closely with the, the contractor and identified a few areas where we can uh, have some savings. So it's, it's right. really uh, it's going well. Good. And um, did they finish pouring all the cement? I mean, I knew they had formed up at pretty much everything. But the, the sidewalks are definitely all in. Um, I don't know if there's any additional piece that has not been completed yet there. But um, they, you know, they are just about getting ready to actually put in the, the pads, et cetera, for where those EV chargers will be right. at the north side of the lot. That's great. Uh, Elm Street complete streets. Uh, so we've so got uh, an open house coming up next week. Uh, Time Bond is providing some materials for that, and I'll be staffing it uh, along right. with a couple other folks from the building. Uh, it's just going to be an opportunity for people to stop by, take a look at the draft concepts that have been developed for that stretch of Elm Street between right. Railroad and Main, yeah. uh, and you know, adding trees, uh, bike and pedestrian amenities, et cetera. Um, and you know, the hope is Time Bond will be able to, at the end of the month, submit a grant application and get you know upwards of five hundred thousand dollars in construction funding for that effort. So that'd be great. Exciting stuff. Uh, how much? How much is that project going to go for? We don't know exactly yet. So they are still in the process of developing a detailed uh, cost estimate. Um, you know, the, in conversations with their engineers, it's a short stretch of road, right? But it's very complicated in yes. that there's a lot of utilities, you know, you're looking at bumping out a curb. Um, so they are going to develop an estimate, um, you know, in the next few weeks. Great. And that would be like new sidewalks, new parking arrangements, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So that would make Elm Street attractive to people coming to visit yeah. South yeah. Are, Deerfield. Are they planning on doing anything with the sewer and the, the other, anything underneath the road itself, or is this just basically surface? So, so I reached out to, um, to Dave at DPC, our preferred wastewater consultant, um, just because I know we have money to look at drainage, et cetera, yeah. and camera it. Um, so there was a thought, maybe we take a look and just see um, before that see project gets underway. Yeah, uh, the agreed. roadway itself in that area is, you know, it's in rough condition. So uh, Chris Miller and I are gonna be talking about, you know, when should this happen? And obviously if it happens in conjunction with that project, I think that makes the most sense, Absolutely. particularly given that they're moving curbs out, et cetera. So. We're yep. looking at that. Uh, okay. Buddy Brook, really quick. Um, so we have, um, we're going to be contracting with GZA and Field Geology Services to undertake the hydrologic and hydraulic study of the Buddy Brook watershed. Um, uh, Chris Curtis and Wayne Feidner are going to be part of that effort as well, helping out with some of the engagement pieces on that. And then there's kind of a sister project to that to do this basically the same thing for Sugarloaf Brook um, that we were just that area we were just talking about, um, and uh, it, fortunately it looks like we're going to be able to have all the same team members on that as well. So should be well coordinated. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be updating the MVP core group committee in uh, in um, uh, October. Okay. Uh, shared senior services, um, so on the, the senior center feasibility study, we had a meeting this morning, Trevor, you were there, of course you know, so yeah. it was a lively discussion. The, the consultant presented their kind of initial test fit for some of their concepts at the three sites, um, Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield. 
Um, I think the conclusion of the meeting was they're going to get back to us with some high-level cost estimates to try to help us narrow it down between the three options. So yep. more to come on that. Yep. Um, and they do, just, just to uh, yep. let the public know on, um, I think it's October 2nd, is it? It's, or is it next week? I'm trying to think when it was. The, um, there will be a, uh, at the Senior Center of um, Administrative Offices in Sunderland, uh, there is a, is it a meet and greet kind of talk about? It's, a, it's an outreach event. They're going to have, uh, the consultant's going to have a survey available for, for folks to fill out. Um, and this is going to be, I believe, the first of a couple events where uh, members of the public will have an opportunity to weigh in yeah. um, before they actually develop any kind of final recommendations. So yeah, it, it is next Thursday, but I it is it October second. Oh, October second. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. Two two Wednesdays from yep. now. Yep. Okay. Just so people are aware, could weigh in. That'd be great. Unless I marked the wrong. No, Thursday. I have it here too. I have it nine o'clock. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's EDM studio, yeah, Amherst Road. Yep. Uh, and then real quick, our network geothermal study that uh, Bureau Happold has undertaken with this uh, heat grant, $50,000. Uh, I touched base with them last week. They have developed some initial findings. Um, we're looking for a date where they can come before the Energy Committee and possibly that MVP core group, present their findings, get some feedback. Um, and we're going to have a a report out to heat next week um, on the progress of that but it, it looks good and they're um, you know at the stage where they're gonna be looking at okay uh, you know where do these boreholes have to go and you know what will that cost and that'll help us kind of think through you know is this is this a viable option uh, for for Deerfield and are they also um, considering the Berkshire gas kind of pathway yes yeah, so so all of these grants through heat are looking at potentially gas to geo so you know if this is something that gas companies want to take on since their uh, you know their customer base there is dwindling i mean obviously we have a moratorium here in franklin county with uh, gas hookups yeah. um, and they so have yeah. 100 year old infrastructure that's leaking everywhere yep. um yeah right yep so it, it makes sense that they might be interested in looking at that route um Beyond that, I, I think that's uh, all my updates for now. <laughs> so I think that's enough, right? Thank you, yeah, thank you for all so. your work. Yeah, I know you've been super no, busy you. tackling multiple jobs. So very grateful. So um, since we have um, a potential fence viewer candidate in the uh, audience, uh, I'd like to reorganize the, the schedule, if you don't mind. Please. And invite John Frank to come up and uh, talk to us about uh, his interest in serving the community. Thank you. And also, yeah, have a seat and introduce yourself. Also, the veterans uh, bring the mic right up close would be great. Yeah. Thank you. The the Pioneer Valley Veterans District too. He's also interested in serving on that. So That'd be wonderful. John Frank, Stage Road, eight years in Deerfield. Um, I spent many years mapping. So, I <clears throat> yeah, look close is really helpful yeah. for the people on that line. So thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Yep. I spent many years mapping, and um, I was a veteran as a young man. So those are the general qualifications I see for the fit. I'm very grateful that you're um, interested. I got this uh, incredible um, handbook on fence viewers done by a man in Pelham. Great. And uh, he wrote the book, and it explains the history and uh, the mission. It's wonderful. Yeah. One thing I can say, I, I know John a little, and uh, uh, he's very calm and very reasonable. And, uh, you know, I think fences and neighbors are known to have problems with each other. So it's good to have a calm person in a, in a position like that. So um, very grateful that you're willing and to I start. wonder do we have a do we have the a, a date for the last time we actually had a fence viewer uh, Skip Olmstead I think was was viewer many years back if I remember all happy memories yeah I'm right. very very grateful you're welcome look at this I didn't, never did have to go no but uh, maybe that bit of information gives you some some info i'd be interested in looking at that too and i'm very I'll grateful send the, i'll send the pdf to administration that'd be great that'd be great i'd like to like to look at it um 
do you want to do that first? And yeah, then let's do that, the and then we can okay. move to the veterans. Do you have any questions, Blake? No, not on the fence, you or no. All right. So Except I do want to see the book at some point. Yeah. I'd like to know I'd what make, a fence viewer does. I'd make a motion to appoint uh, John Frank to um, be fence viewer for the town of Deerfield. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, gratefully, yes. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And I would make a motion for, and then we can discuss, and make a motion to appoint John Frank to the uh, representative to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District. We have a second. I'll second. Great. So I would just, I can't thank you enough for stepping up and, and willing to serve our, uh, you know, our residents and our, our veterans. This um, position was um, served for a long time by, um, by a member of town and um, needed to take a step back. So we're, we're, we haven't been unrepresented for, for about a year or so, maybe a little bit longer. So we're, we're so grateful that you would be able to um, take an interest in, and serve the residents and the thank you. veterans. Very, very, uh, very important to me for sure. So, so, uh, and this is more probably towards the board than towards you. But uh, your job, your duties, as far as being the representative, would you be um, dealing with the rep that comes in on a weekly basis? So, and generally, they uh, the representative here would attend the meetings in in Green. I think they held them in, hold them in Greenfield, and it's the whole Upper Pioneer Valley District gets together and they. They talk about the different needs and funding that comes through to support, and but I don't think he would be interacting. I mean, they're happy to interact with the person here. I, I just wasn't sure how diff that, different how this roles, was set yep, up, so. different roles okay. that comes in and, and is available. We have a representative that comes in and is available for veterans to come and discuss any issues that they have. Uh, sometimes he has people, you know, partake, and maybe we could encourage. You know, with your work, we could encourage and get the word out to more veterans that he is available. I'm not sure if all of them know. Um, that we have that because service available he, to them. I've been in here quite a few times, and he, nobody comes in to use yeah. their services. So yeah. that would be one thing that you know maybe as as the representative for the town that you might be able to find some of the vets that need some services yeah. that can come in and talk to him. That match those so. services up would be great. Yeah, and um, see where else it can be posted for people to happen upon. Yes, absolutely. Yep, get the word out more. Um, yeah. uh, very, very excited that you're willing to step up and do this. Thanks. Okay, so we've had a motion and uh, a yes. second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank Blake you. Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much, Thank John. you very much. We appreciate yeah. it. I look forward to the book. Check, check that out. On over to administration. Sounds good. Thank you, John. Good night. All right, so back to the... Back to the regular order of events. Um, so uh, at our, on our interim meeting last week when we, we met to uh, approve the posting of the town administrator's position on the Massachusetts Mun uh, Municipal Association website and start advertising for candidates, we um, <clears throat> approved a $1,000 a month stipend for Christopher Dunn because he stepped up and uh, taken over you know, responsibility for being the interim town administrator in addition to his regular work um, while we're, we're in the search mode. Mm -hmm. uh, we had originally s said we wanted to do this for beginning September 9, but Sarah Kimball pointed out that uh, we can't do this in between pay periods. So okay. um, what I'd like to do is uh, propose that we rec retroactively to September 1st mm -hmm. start the stipend. And um, it's, it's true that we didn't give uh, Christopher a stipend when we were without Greg Snedeker, our new assistant town administrator, and he's been picking up you know, a fair amount of work. He picked up the Leary lot from our previous town admin, assistant town administrator, Chris Nolan, who departed for uh, Turner's Falls. Mm -hmm. um, so, Do you uh, you that? want to ratify? Yeah, I just want to ratify that we're changing the date to September 1st. And uh, um, so if we can make a motion for discussion. I'll make a motion to approve and ratify the monthly stipend for economic develop, economic uh, planning and economic development coordinator um, to take over the duties as interim town administrator um, retroactive to September 1st, 2024. Second. Any discussion? 
Yeah, and this is just basically Chris is covering in until we do come up with a new town administrator, and that's what yep. this is for. And he has been and covering for Chris, absolutely. too. And yep. has already been covering for Casey's yep. position, so. And it's been invaluable, and he's also, you know, working closely with Greg to bring him on board. So they're, they're already working effectively as a team, and... Uh, um, Please thank your, thank your wife and family for us, too, because... <laughs> we'll do. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. We're probably not on our good side at the moment. <laughs> anyway, so um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right. Um, any select board announcements and reports? Trevor, you often have them. Um, well, I, uh, I was talking with, well, through talking with you about we're, we're going to set the sewer rate hearing uh, for October, towards the end of October. Um, talk to um, DPC Engineering. They usually help us coordinate that. So um, Brenda will be back in a little bit. Um, Dave suggested maybe he comes in and meets with the board here, the sewer commissioners, to talk about projects coming up. You know, if we don't do any work at all, what the rate would be if we did, you know, we have Eastern and Cross to do, or Cross, Eastern and Gray's sewer uh, pipes to deal with. We do have funding each year in the I&I &I budget. Um, I'm not sure if it's enough. We did carry over some money, so we need to look at what we have for funding there. I asked about the um, SRF grants from, uh, from the state, and loans from the state, uh, which is the state revolving fund for the effluent pipe work that we need to do out to the river. Uh, we don't have any answer on that yet, so there's no information there. Um, but Dave was gonna work with Brenda and, and us and kind of come up with a, a little bit of a rate study and see where we need to be. And then we, we need to uh, post that 30 days before the hearing. So I think you are gonna get it on the schedule anyways, and that would give us 30 days to kind of get a, get a plan together on what we want to do which we do every year at this time so what, Sarah mentioned. wasn't there something you were going to do with uh, eastern ave and gray street with mm -hmm. that as far as that the also pipes. that budget too to get the pipe squared away there exactly now, yep okay was that i had had an understanding that um that they had the money to do the the lining portion um but that the dig up portion was the problem so i think it was uh, yeah so that's part of the carryover money you were speaking about? Yes, yep, money we didn't spend. We had some money set aside. We hadn't spent it um, because the bid came in like twice what we had originally thought. And, right. um, we, and then we had tried to tie it in with the work at Old Deerfield, that last pipe. So uh, we did get one bid from Mass West, and it was just way more than we could do. So we just figured we'd hold on that. Um, mm -hmm. We thought we'd, you know, maybe if we go out to bid shortly, we'd get more favorable timing for contract just to bid the project um, and just to reevaluate what, what we need to do there. But I'm glad we could get Eastern and Graves paved, at least up to Cross. I know Cross is still a mess and further on, but those, those are a big majority of the, of the streets, so right. I know that'll make the residents happy there. You, um, will, uh, you will be surprised that I had a conversation with the, I think it was a Graves Street person who said, I don't actually mind the street because it slows people down. <laughs> it but I does. Said, I'm sure you're in the vocal minority. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. it does. Yeah, I looked at they're going to be uh, putting in the new sidewalks that goes down partial way down Graves as well. Yeah, and uh, I was just thinking it'll be nice are for, they, for Halloween. On those sidewalks, are they going to narrow those or are they going to? No, they have to be. It's actually, it actually has to be five feet. I think it it's only wide. four. Yeah, right now, yeah. so they might take a little bit of the road to do that, and a little bit because that's a narrow right road to begin with. To it put is that sidewalk it's, down it's there, right it's up very against skinny. the trees too. Yeah. So you either cut down all the trees, yep. not favorable either. No. So uh, just trying to split that down the middle if we can. So, is there any indication about uh, the relative stability of the sewer fees, or, or? yeah? Uh, well, if we did no work, I mean, it always goes up a bit because you have yeah. cost of inflation and everything like that. But um, I mean, we just really have these two products, and we really haven't done anything with Old Deerfield yet. Right. And that we're not tackling right. that right now. We have some ideas to kind of move forward on that project, a little by little, and not a huge remodel like we did at the other plant. So it's just a matter of kind of get, getting us all in a room and start talking about the priorities of what we need to do and what the costs are. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, and is it is there uh, again? I think we discussed this once, Trevor, but I I don't know if we ever got back to it. Was the fact that of maybe setting setting up a fund to start replacing the pipes mm -hmm. that need to be replaced? And yeah, that it'd be something that we could forward down the road. Yes, start setting up a. A schedule so right. that we could actually get these Cause we usually, pipes replaced. Yeah, so. we usually have a hundred thousand or so in I and I, and maybe a little bit, maybe ninety or so in engineering each year in in that sewer budget or in DPW budget for the sewer work. But it's generally not enough to do a, a large section. So, well, and, uh, but if yeah. we could build up a couple years and then right. yeah, come up with a capital I'm, plan. I'm thinking stick, keep it out of there and set up a complete separate fund. And if you only do you know, 10,000 in mm -hmm. a year or whatever, and it builds up over time, then you've got money that you can start funneling yeah. off to do certain projects. And, and part, I mean, yeah. I could be totally wrong. No, originally, the money when, aspect when, we it, but. when we engineered all the plant work and we were gonna tackle both plants at once, right. um, we also talked about setting a certain amount of money aside for borrowing to do a couple hundred thousand a year of of pipes but we just you know with the amount of work we did there we're just kind of catching our breath and figuring out what we need to do but yeah it needs to happen because you know especially pine nook road i mean that i know would have loved to have done it but before it all got redone but that that's the worst uh system you know worst pipes in the system right now they're in real bad shape so i don't know how much they'll last you know at right. some point we'll be forced to do it so it'd be great to get it on a plan and but this asset management plan will lay that out for us, you know. And I just—I um, didn't print it off, but I just got the emails today from DEP to um, those grants that we got, the four hundred thousand dollar grants. Um, I think combined um, was to do uh, the asset management of our stormwater and our sewer. Um, we just got the go ahead to proceed on those today. So, um, so I'm that's sure the camera is, work. That, that's all the camera right, so work. So that way we will have pictures right. of all the exactly. good and the bad that that's we find right. underground. And yep, yep. We have the one from 2015, but now we'll have an updated <laughs> one with all you know. They'll study the plants and all the camera work of the of the uh, pipes for the sewer, and then we'll have a, one we've never had, which is all the the drainage in town, the stormwater drainage. So that will get started fairly soon, and and tie in with the Leary lot work that that Chris was talking about on Elm Street. So a lot happening, a lot to keep track of, but it's good stuff. Yep. Anything else? Nope. Blake? All set. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything too, too overwhelming. I just want to remind people who are listening that uh, Triad is doing their annual fundraiser spaghetti dinner. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think tickets are still $10, uh, and uh, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else. At 15 now. Oh, 15. Okay, 15. Went up Sorry. <laughs> I haven't bought inflation. mine yet. I would know the answer to that question. That's inflation. Um, but a uh, worthy cause, and it's over at the uh, uh, Polish Club. And, uh, and that's when is that again? That's yeah, in yeah, I was, October, I believe. Yeah, I, would, I was going to check. I, I talked to Sharon about it yesterday, and I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, have my checkbook with me, so i got to go over and see her. Um, but uh, And also, um, I think we just got a, an email from Linda Fontaine about the annual townwide tag sale, and they're looking to try and have a rain date in case, you know, people set up on Saturday, but they have to pull everything back because it's raining. So they're looking for, like, the following Sunday, I mean, the Sunday afterwards. The, and it seems like something that would be good to do, and I don't know uh, what, uh, what we need to do as a town to make it. Possible, yeah. I think what the what they're looking for is the fee. There's a like fee, or just yeah. waive the fee. We usually that waive thing. that. Yeah, the fees right. waive typically, but you know, just if they have to do it the next day. Yeah, allow exactly. It. Right, yeah. just allow it. So, like, give them a two day window. I think going right. forward, I think that would be yeah. a good thing. Can we to just do. do that through Chris and not have to? Yeah, we would. I think we would just take a consensus vote on. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I was going to suggest: is let's let's do that so that yeah, give them some clarity and. And yeah, and I, I think Linda's request was just to have October 6th, which is the day following as the rain date. Yeah. Um, so Sounds I'm happy to, to work with Pat or, and uh, Cassie to get that up on the website. Yeah, do you want a motion? Yeah, to let's vote? do that. So I'll yeah, make a motion to approve the rain date of October 6th for 2024 um, all town tag sale. I second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great comment. Thank you for whoever brought that forward. Yeah, Linda Fontaine and oh great yep. so Perfect. Um, 
<clears throat> yep. So uh, spaghetti dinner is October 17th. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and the final thing I just wanted to mention is uh, probably everybody read about it, but uh, Deerfield Academy is now um, going to be offering free tuition to families that are below the $150,000 income level. Um, it's a great thing for families who are considering private school and mm -hmm. um, it doesn't only apply to Deerfield residents, obviously it applies to anybody who is accepted at the school. And um, I'm thinking it might be a good opportunity to talk to um, uh, Mr. Austin and the, the trustees about, uh, you know, looking into uh, the uh, school funding that uh, we provide to their staff members, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that um, they're all residents of town, but if they live on campus, and this would be Eagle Brook, this would be Bement, mm -hmm. um, you know, give us an opportunity to talk about maybe helping out funding the, the students that attend our schools. So, uh, where most are under 150,000. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and uh, just um, if they're if they're in DES or they're in FRS, uh, you know, a lot of the kids typically are, I think more of them are in elementary school, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a conversation that they they have been willing to have, but we haven't really had it. So maybe yeah. it's a it's something that uh, I could talk with Christopher about, and maybe we write a letter and and suggest, you know, let's have a conversation. Because uh, I think it's 40 to 45 students a year that that we um, we welcome to our schools. So, just a thought. So now we'll move on to the discussion items. Um, we have a special town meeting warrant that we need to open mm -hmm. again because I think there were some some changes that were needed to be made um, after legal counsel. And okay. I'm actually going to pass out uh, an even more updated version. Lisa had changes oh, right up until the last minute, so it's three copies so there. So are we discarding the one that we have, right? Yeah, throw that away. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So i make a motion to open the <laughs> special town meeting warrant. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay. So, uh, Chris, do you want to take us through? Yep, give me one moment. I'm just pulling it up. Sure. <coughs> do we have any bills? We're waiting to hear from Brenda. So, yeah, so Article 1 is the, uh, you know, placeholder for any late bills um, or prior year bills, rather. Uh, yep. So far, you know, we don't have any. Great. Uh, we include that just in case. Yep. Um, and. Okay. Uh, we'll see if we get any between now and October 7th. Yeah, we can always pass over it. Yep. Yep. Uh, Article 2, uh, this is the mm -hmm. uh, rebates that the, the um, school received for their HVAC work. We're just hoping to prevent that money from ending up in the general fund and instead put it right back into that project and complete the HVAC work at DES. Yes. Um, and that was recommended by the, the Finance Committee, I believe. Yes. Or at least the capital planning committee. Or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know if finance has talked about it yet. Finance they only talked talk about, about it. Yeah. Yep. One Sorry, thing. Julie, don't want to put words in your committee's mouth. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Article Three. Uh, so this is um, the one hundred thirty thousand for DEP uh, consent decree that uh, Chief Pachurik spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one we may or may not have to do because of right. the action we took tonight. Right. Right. But so this may, uh, this may be another passover potentially. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then Article 4, uh, this was a, a Finance Committee recommendation uh, to transfer $300,000 uh, to the General Stabilization Fund. Mm -hmm. You yeah. want to talk about that? At all? Yeah, I think, well, what, why don't we let them go through and then, because okay. I think I remember you had some thoughts on that. And Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Article 5 is the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, so, you know, what they have before them right now is a request for $3.8 million for the uh, 1888 project. Yep. So we can talk about that in a moment. Article 6 is the land disposition for the uh, St. James property. So this would allow the select board to dispose of the property for senior housing purposes. Uh, Article 7 is the first of two uh, articles that uh, place town on land under Article 97 protection. This property at Article 7 is uh, Pine Nook Forest. Uh, and then Article 8 covers the same uh, process, but for uh, Pocumtuck Rock. 
um, and importantly, it exempts uh, you know the portions of that property that are being used by the um, cell tower, etc. Wasn't was he, wasn't there two other there 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 were but but they we'll, we'll, been removed. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll I'll speak to that in a moment. Okay. And then just real quick, Article Nine. Uh, so that's the citizen petition to have electronic vote tabulators at at town meeting. Okay. So let's uh, pop back to Article Four, and that's the okay. one. The finance committee recommendation and so mm -hmm. so um, I think we have I think we don't have uh, free cash certified yet but I think it's going to come in at a pretty decent number if I remember right is that one, one between yeah I, I thought one, she said one eight or something like I think that? it's 1.8 million yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I feel more comfortable with this at that point if free cash is at that is it at that level I'm concerned because we have a lot going on with, you know, a lot that we need to do in town with this other work, but we've got that funded for the, right, for the um, repair work um, around the ditches, and then I was concerned about some of the, the, you know, effluent pipe work and different things, but I think um, I think I'm in favor of this at the moment seeing free cash is where it is so Julie do you mind coming up and just sitting for a second so we can pick your brain I think you have a good number good name brain for numbers and I am interested in um, do you remember the stabilization fund was down to like 800,000 level or is it lower than that I think do you remember now. I want to say it's eight. sorry I, I, I don't <laughs> remember specifically off the top of my head I'm, yeah. I'm not Super comfortable doing it off the top of my head. No, that's fine. So I, I know it was it had lower than we'd down. like. I can tell you that um, we went through yeah. and looked at a set of financial policies, and right. we had a recommendation yeah. that um, that the general stabilization fund should be at. Seven. I think it was seven percent oh. of the um, of our budget value, basically. And um, so this 300,000 would take that stabilization up to that 7% right. value, which seems like a comfortable place to be. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually didn't recommend putting the full 600,000 back in because right. general stabilization had kind of gotten up fairly high. Right. Um, yeah. But we recommend 300,000 take us back. Yeah, and I know that the uncertainty around what, what free cash would come in at, um, yes. we got some good surprises that uh, I agree that um, that's a reasonable sum. And it's it's, and, it's fiscally responsible to do, I think. Right. I, you know, I, I, I feel like there's not, <clears throat> you know, yes, we have a lot to do in town, but, you know, it helps to have that money. It's not like we can't ask the residents for it if something comes up, but it's at least we have it there to cover an emergency if needed. Right. And, and it, it is pretty low at the moment after having to pull 600 out. I remember a part of the discussion from the select board side and, in the finance committee meeting where we talked about this was you know there is an expectation that the stabilization fund is is for stabilizing when you need it and for replenishing when you are lucky enough not to mm -hmm. so it makes sense to backfill mm -hmm. um, yeah i feel like, you feel like yeah i just have a question on the seven percent i mean why mm -hmm. why did you come up with that figure that's that's the only question that i have um it was kind of a process. So we looked at a bunch of other towns and where other towns set um, with their financial policies. And then we also looked at what that value has been over um, the past probably 15 years um, compared to our budget. And uh, between the two of those, that's the number we well, landed and, on. So. You know, is that, to me, that explains it as far as what's going on because I hear the seven percent but I didn't know where you came up mm -hmm. with it that's all so yep. thank you and I was wondering if DLS has you know any guidance on that because I know no, you look don't. at the yeah yeah I, I asked that question <laughs> and, um, you would think yeah that they would have but they don't would you would you expect next year to ask for another 300 or we, we, you would feel mm -hmm. like okay this is kind of brings us to that level where you think and it may drop we may have other values so you may need to put in 15,000 or something like that to keep right. it at that 7% but it wouldn't right. be a you felt it was higher than it really needed to be maybe exactly yeah mm -hmm. okay yep. 
And right. that number, I mean, that money is invested, so that number it fluctuates is. even if we don't put money right. into it. So. That's true. Um, right. And then, um, I guess, and then we could then start focusing towards the capital stabilization. Right, exactly. Right. really need yeah, to put money. That is where yep. we would be focusing. Okay. That was yes. about my next question was, you know, we didn't and, address capital this year, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, we will have a spring town meeting to, to consider something there if, if yeah. we're fortunate enough to be able to. Yeah. Usually we do in the fall spend a ton of cap, you know, free cash on capital stuff, but I think it's good to take a breath, see what the winter has, and we tackle it in the spring. Um, I've been corrected. We do, we do have free cash certified. So yeah, oh, good. Yep. I thought it was free yep. cash certified. Yep. Did like one point eight. Yes. Yeah. Whatever. Brett and change. There. Yep. So <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, and that's a good number. Yep. Um, Okay. Still wish Thank we didn't you. have the six hundred thousand dollar hole from the storm damage. It would be even better number. We could yep. capitalize <laughs> capital stabilization. Yeah. But be thankful for what we have. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you Thanks. very much. Okay. So, so favor of that. Do we need to make a motion to approve this change, or do we? Do um, we do will the, have to we'll vote just, each article we'll eventually. Just, yeah. But we can go through it and then yeah. vote at the end if you want. Yeah. Um, okay. And so. Um, we're the sponsor of the the 1888 project, so I yeah I don't know that we we don't really weigh in on this. Um, other it is our warrant, but mm -hmm. um, CPC is going to present the uh, the project, and of yeah. course we'll be available to answer questions, or Christopher will, depending on you know who who we ask to to speak to the questions that might come up at the meeting. And my feeling, just to speak <coughs> publicly on it, I think it's a smart. Um, investment because it, it is able to rehab that building instead of letting it just kind of deteriorate further um, it will give our town um, you know our town government a place to function that's not freezing and cold and not efficient there's just a, so many reasons and we're take advantage of a incredibly generous four million dollar grant from um, our legislation <coughs> and we're not raising additional taxes for for it for the main construction of the project and we're using you know CPA and the grant and it's I think it's a great uh, a great way to use the CPA money and fund the project and get the town moving forward so just my two cents on the article so that's it um, well since we're talking about it I agree I basically think that right now we have um, essentially three downtown properties, one of which was purchased last year for the express purpose of uh, encouraging senior subsidized housing development in downtown, walkable to businesses, um, walkable to the, the expanded library, walkable to um, you know other people, walk, walkable to the games that the rec department puts on in the field, field back here, for seniors to be more engaged in the community. Mm -hmm. So if that moves forward, that vacant, semi-vacant property will become a usable asset to the town. If we move forward on the 1888 building, we will have um, you know, a lovely, energy efficient, state code compliant, ADA compliant, mm -hmm. um, new town office. Some, some of the offices like the rec department wouldn't be moving over to the new building. So there would be another building that's semi-vacant, no longer vacant, and then we would be looking at finding a purpose for, for this part of the town, the existing town hall, perhaps as a temporary senior center or services facility that in conjunction with the, the, the space where the library is, mm -hmm. is currently active. Um, I think minimizing, you know, approaching this as a, a standalone project, we have a an empty building, we will have a perfectly brand new building, and we will not be ra raising real estate taxes to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a. I don't know when this this opportunity will drive up again. Right. It just just seems like a lot of sense. It possible. Yeah. All right. Well, so, go ahead. So, um, I think with this project here, I think they did it right. I think that. Uh, the funding and everything is in place. I think that they're, you know, something that we have to monitor as it goes forward to see how this building is, is, is built and making sure that everything that uh, 
the concerns that the citizens have on it, that we make sure we're compliant with that that setup as well. So I am, uh, I do agree with this one here. And the thing that I do have is the, what you brought up, Tim, was the fact that the use of this building and what it's going to be used for. And I mean, I don't even think that we should be considering this as a temporary for the uh, seniors. This should be a permanent place for the seniors. And I think that that's something we should be looking at. Again, we don't have the money to be doing all these projects at once, and I think that's something we have to step back on. Um, but again, I feel the fact that they were not raising any uh, tax dollars for this, that we're using money that's already in place, that um, I'm in agreement with this, with this project. The one thing we'll have to do, and it came up in the Building Advisory Committee, um, strong, strong uh, opinion on this, and, and, and it makes sense, but we have to figure out how do we do this is to really have a, um, a maintenance person, somebody that, that maintains. We have you know, all the investment in the library, investment in, you know, the, a new building here, even just the work that needs to get done, you know, if we're in here or just police department, you know, our chief of police is doing a lot of this work, and we need a facilities director, and we should really think about how, you know, we, we have a person kind of stipend for that job, but has been out, you know, due to injury for quite a long time, and uh, so there's a lot of things that we should really think about how do we, we're investing in these things, how do we make sure we have money aside to maintain them, capital plans going forward to main, you know, replace stuff 20 years out. And, and um, th this is the discussion that I had with Chris and uh, Greg this afternoon was the fact that we should not let these buildings get into the disrepair that they are because we are not maintaining them. Right. And the thing is, like you said, there was, it's like whoever is available, that's who you send over there. Right. And I think probably it should be maybe a position that uh, mm -hmm. when we get a new uh, DPW, uh, director right that that person falls under there but they're that's their their goal with the amount of buildings that we have in this town yeah. it's you could have one person that could could handle that type and of thing and look at funding and how, right. how we support that and help it's important with, through the dpw coordinate things that need to be done with which would be regular maintenance mm -hmm. you know and then be able to coordinate if we have some serious issues that yeah. we've got people online yep. to handle those as well yeah, yeah sure. and we definitely need to we we all of us have been talking to Christopher and Greg about uh, we need to get the DPW fully staffed. Yes. We need to get, um, you know. Um, Good evaluation. Yes, and I've, I've reached out to, um, as Chief Bouchard suggested, we reach out to Chris Bouchard, who's now oh, with good. the Chapter 90 section, and he's agreed to come. We keep trying to schedule time, but, <laughs> you know, we're all so overworked. It hasn't happened yet. Yep. But um, we hope to have a, a meeting with Chris Miller Chief Pachorek, Chris Bouchard, and anybody who has yep. an interest in, um, you know, talking about is the DPW properly formulated? Are mm -hmm. they doing the things that we need them to do? Um, then we need to have an informational campaign to alert citizens, look, the DPW doesn't, doesn't scrape your roads and repave them. That's something they contract out. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the jobs that they do. Maybe we adjust those, but I agree that Maintenance is something that has to be done on a monthly basis, not on something that's just ad hoc. You wait right. five years and, and for a problem, and yeah. and and it's it's a tough nut. It is. It's hard but, to find the money uh, to do it. All. But you know, it, it having it based in the DPW, but uh, you know, having some flexibility so that mm -hmm. sometimes they can do regular DPW work, but if they don't get pulled off of regular maintenance because the DPW yeah, I, is shorthanded. I, when you start robbing one one function for, nothing, for nothing another function, down. you know the grass can grow ten inches, and it's not going to be like if the the building falls down. Right. Yeah. So, See, I firmly believe that if you do have a building maintenance guy, he's going to have enough to keep him busy that he does not need to be pulled off to do mm -hmm. DPW yeah, duties. We, and again. I mean, everybody's got to do a helping hand. I, I understand that aspect of it. But the thing is, is that that's his main function. Yep, and it's going to take priority mm -hmm. over assisting the DPW side of the right. house. Exactly. Yep. You know, like storm, snowstorm. Okay. Right. Sure. Maybe he gets Obviously. in the truck. Well, he's charged of the building, so he may be out there shoveling. So who yeah, knows? Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. Um, okay. Just wanted to mention that. No, that's a good, that's a good thought. And uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, so. 
the land. Um, yeah, take a look at Article Six. Article Six. Yeah. Is right. The um, the property to be turned into senior housing. I mean, I think that, that that's the whole reason we bought the building. It's the whole reason we've been planning this thing. I believe I'm in favor of it. Yeah, the logic of it was the, the, the town voted to do this, use CPC money, which is one of the three main functions of CPC is community housing. Yeah. Um, Deerfield has been trying. I, I, 20 years. Yeah, I, I met with Sharon Petrork yesterday. One of the things we talked about was the spaghetti. But yep. the other thing was <laughs> senior housing. I mean, she's been involved with Lily Dwight and, you know, Carolyn Ness and others. Um, they, they tried to get a project developed over uh, on a piece of land that was donated specifically for recreation and or senior housing. It didn't make the grade because the road that it was off of was too narrow for mm -hmm. emergency trucks, et cetera. Um, this is centrally located. There's no issues of that. Um, it's walkable, et cetera. Um, and the, the second step logic, logically is finding a good contractor who will go out and get their, the funds from state, federal, and private sources to build this at no expense to the town. Mm -hmm. And then it develop, uh, hand this land over once that contractor's been brought on board uh, as our contribution to this project. $450,000 seems like a small amount of money to end up with mm -hmm. 25 units of, you know, some, some of which is subsidized senior housing for our residents and surrounding residents, of course. State doesn't allow you to just restrict it. Right. But we have, we have ways that we can bump the, the Deerfield residents up on the list uh, that are allowable under state law. Um, and, and then it would pay taxes to the town. So. Right. I just think uh, we have to, you know, let the town residents follow through on this and decide if that's what they want us to and do. And see what a developer says. I mean, yeah. see if it can happen. It may not happen. I mean, know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like some of the residents in town. I don't understand this whole process. I've been trying to get wrap around it and figure out what the best way to go with this. But uh, as of right now, I just I feel that it's I don't feel it's a good fit. I mean, so, I mean, it just doesn't seem like um, the <coughs> land usage and the way that they've got, I mean, there's so many different proposals on this and keeping the church, getting rid of the church, doing, mm -hmm. taking, taking a ball field and stuff like that. I think there's too many variables on mm -hmm. this that I, 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 I just have a lot of questions about it and that we spent 450000 and what's the return to the town except the fact that we may have three or four residents from town living in a 25 unit facility. I mean, I, I just, you I'm do, having a hard time and with you that. Won't, I just want yeah, you to understand and I, that. I get where you're coming from. You just won't see it until you get a developer to really look at it and say, this is what can happen. And I'm interested in, well, in going the, forward. So, the problem so it is, doesn't go yeah. anywhere until somebody comes in and makes a plan. Right. Well, we have a, concepts that could work, but. Well, there's, there's some confusion ready. here and I, I can hopefully clear up a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. um, the town hired a company called VHB to imagine, they, they looked at the quote campus. Mm -hmm. At the time it was eight acres. And they, they came up with a proposal that said, well you could, if the, if the town hall moved to the 1888 building, you could put senior housing in this location. They said you could put, you know, they looked at, well we could put senior housing in the middle of the existing ball field. The current plan that senior housing is developed does not have anything to do with taking reusing the scene, the ball field for anything other than a ball field um, it's an actually fairly robust plan that's um, been the rfp has been actually designed by somebody who works at the state level on this kind of stuff uh, no idea of taking the ball field away there is um you know there is a possibility that you know uh i think vhb as I said, had the St. James property came late to the table, so the one they're looking for is just that 2.1 acre site, just reusing the church as possibly three units. Um, maybe they would use it for a senior gathering spot. Oftentimes the senior housing has that component to it, but um, you know, I think the people who voted to do this you know, had in mind that we were going to put senior housing there, and and I, I think one of the things that uh, 
saving the ball field is a good thing. People who live in that, and I think it's a 62 and over, is the, what they're looking to do. Um, because the town has only got less than 2% of, a, quote, affordable housing or subsidized housing, um, we're, we're a town where unless you have 10% level, um, you can have a, a developer come in and develop an unfriendly 40B project which could have 40 units. It could have, it uh, doesn't have to follow planning. Um, this was what was threatened when the Sugarloaf Estates were developed. I don't know if people remember that, but um, the developer said, look, I want to do this small, well, I mean 75 units is not small, but I want to do this project, but you know, if you, if you don't work with me, then I could do this other project. So uh, it's something that we'd like to be able to control some of what happens in the downtown and this is one way where we can develop a project. I would suggest you go to Sanderson Place. I'm trying to get to uh, get Sunderland to report on the tax revenue they've gotten since Sanderson Place opened um, because it's not on their website. Um, I asked right. Greg Snedeker to look into it. He's talked to Margaret Nardowix, but we haven't got any answers. Um, but Where, where's the where's the revenue coming from from the property itself? The taxes. Yeah, it's 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 real estate that's taxable. So. And I was I was under the impression that that was being uh, run by a nonprofit. It's it, well, no, it's a not-for-profit corporation, but it's not a nonprofit. Yeah. It's uh, they Tax. develop taxable re or re real estate, and one of their missions is to have a portion of it be subsidized so that um, you know seniors who are living on just their social security can afford to live there. They pay a portion of their social security, and they qualify to be housed, um, but. Others would be market rate units, but that's why I want to find out what is the real estate assessment of the Sanderson Place. Uh, before it was developed, it was like $400,000, and it was a farmhouse. It was and like 36 units or something went in there? It's 35, I 35 believe. 35 units. Yeah, and um, you know, so there's three in the, the old Sanderson farmhouse, and then there's uh, 32 in the main building. So this is information that would be valuable, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, Trying to, get it. trying to get information from the municipal government it can sometimes be challenging. <laughs> information act. So. so, again, that being said, I'm not against senior housing at all, and I'm not against that if we have a, a, a plan that is agreed to by the town by the townspeople, mm -hmm. that I would I would be all for it. But the thing is, is like I said, I've got too many questions, and I can't answer questions that I've been looking for. I'm gonna. I talked to uh, Lily. She's going to take me into the church Good. next week. Great. But as of right now, I have concerns. And I that's, told her that's to touch base so, with you. Yep, and, just, and she did. Good. So I will be meeting with her. Uh, yeah, next and week. the good thing about this is all this does is say, if a plan that everybody agrees to drives up, the select board would have the, ability would have to the authority to um, convey or otherwise uh, sell it. Uh, the language here is, um, you know, legal, legally written. So... so Mike. So, so that if this happened three years from now, we would whoever's on the select board at that time would be uh, have the authority to let this project move forward by giving us the authority to do that. But it's, at the rate that it's set up right now, it would be only that we could sell it to somebody that was going to do senior housing. Right, and I believe because it was purchased with CPA money, and the CPA money has the restriction that it's for senior housing that we would have to figure out whether there's a legal, you're looking at trying to resell this to somebody and I don't, I'm not sure that that's even an option. Yeah, I would, It's I'm just like we bought parkland and it's parkland. <laughs> it's got chapter 97 protection. You can't sell it to the next door neighbors. Hey Tim, uh, just to give you an update on that, I'm gonna have a phone call with uh, Christine Medor and Catherine and Lacey tomorrow. Good. They seem to be experts on 40B, and uh, okay. we'll find out a little bit more about the, uh, you know, what what's possible in terms of tax revenue mm -hmm. yeah, for these and the, properties. The, the CPA stuff is, is, you know, it's a funding source that it was purposed. The the reason why we could use those funds is because the land was purchased for anticipation of using using it for senior housing. So. so yeah, we'll just get okay, more so, info. So the question I have on this mm -hmm. now is that if something comes up at this particular, for this particular site, <clears throat> and we get a developer and somebody gets in there, we make the decision that mm -hmm. it gets sold? Yes. We, we don't go back to the town 
no, to make sure right. that they're okay with it. It's up to the select right, board I mean, to dispose of. Exactly. It's just this could have probably been done in in one could have been done in maybe the article last year, but it just wasn't in, written into the article. But the intent is for the land to be used for senior housing. Whether it's this year, three years from now, um, you know, I, I don't. Or never, if it never, you know, if it doesn't make sense, then we'd have to look at a different different right. option. But right, it really, the market's going to tell us whether it's worth it or not. <clears throat> Developers are going to look at it and say, this this makes sense. I can fit this many on and. Right, and Christine Madour, what is her organization? I mean, she works for. She's with Mass Housing Partnership, and they, they were involved with the project when VHB was doing their feasibility study. Okay. So she's kind of tracked this along and got back in touch with Lily oh, uh, once we got to the part with the St. James. Chris, how many units are they talking about for this? So, so there were three concepts that were developed by Austin Design yeah. as subcontractors to Berkshire Design Group. Uh, the three, I believe, were 25 units, 27 units, and 30 units. Those are just concepts, um, and you know they will be. Those concepts will be provided to developers applying, uh, you know, submitting responses to an RFP. Um, but you know they may submit something with more or fewer units than that. And it would also be fully subject to planning board review um, and wetlands review. I mean, there is there is a wetlands delineation done for the property, and an ANRAD has been put in place for the whole eight to ten acre town campus space but it it doesn't it doesn't happen unless it meets you know muster so this Still step is just giving go. giving the select board the authority to transfer land if there is a viable plan if there is a viable contractor uh, it, and um, you know the, the land transfer would be subject to the project moving forward you don't transfer the land before the project is approved and moves forward, so it's like the last step the before, long ways to go. before the before the buildings start to go up. So for the project to move forward, <clears throat> it has to be signed off by the planning board, mm -hmm. zoning board. I'm not 100 percent sure, about but I would. Zoning. If I, it needs to be rezoned. I don't know that the zoning board. I don't think it's a special permit situation, but that's something that have uh, to look at. We can find out. Uh, maybe Chris you could yeah so so with a 40b project um, you know the, the zoning board they will go before the zoning board um, and the critical piece is I believe they can appeal any decision of the zoning board to a higher state authority um, if they feel that the you know the regulations being imposed are unreasonable um, and so you know part of the point of 40b is to allow greater flexibility for affordable housing um, in the face of you know relatively restrictive local zoning bylaws, so so that's uh, how that process, as I understand it, plays out. Okay. Otherwise, we just sit on the property. I mean, we can't do anything with it until we have the authority to sell it. Anyways, so. Yep. Um, do we have any questions about Article Seven and Eight, which are essentially? Nope. We're good with those. Um, yep. I think I would just voice my opinion on this a little bit. I um, I am getting to the point where I really feel like there's nowhere to build in town. Um, this isn't the property to do it, so I'm in favor of these two projects. Um, you know, making sure they're they're protected. Um, it's beautiful property. It's not like you'd want to put a bunch of houses up on the ridge. That's not the place to do it. It just gives me a soapbox to stand on and say, we really need to take a look at all of our land in town and our zoning and look at areas where we can build and invite families to move in. And, um, you know, we've been 5,000 people for 20 years. Um, there's, an, there's very hard to find housing in town. I think we need housing, um, just not on this property. So I'm in favor of these. Just gave me the opportunity to say, we really need to look at where we can build in this town. And, you know, we've recently taken steps to allow ADUs, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there are options for people to develop, particularly in, like in South Deerfield, yep. um, in already densely populated areas. Um, a lot of our land is farmland. And, it is. And rightfully, it's a good yep. thing that it's farmland. And some farmers have made the determination that they want to put it in APR. And um, there are ways to take land out of APR, but it's difficult. Correct. 
um, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of New England towns like Turner's, you look at Turner's, they, their houses are, they're in the downtown are right next to each other. Yep. And I lived there when I was a young, yeah. young person. We don't have that in no. Deerfield. And um, so that's part of the, part of the issue is, you know, we what, are, pe what are people who live here, are they willing to do? Mm -hmm. What do they want to do? Yep. And um, somebody said, uh, Franklin Land Trust, former chief said, you know, you, you can't build yourself, you can't build yourself out of problems, you know, because every time you build something else, that adds to the cost of running the town. Sure. So, but it is a good point. But it is. You it's know, it's, it's a good point. It's eat, eat, these taxpayers have, with these specific property yep. have to pay that tax bill, and it gets bigger and bigger every year unless yep. you diversify that a little bit. with Which we're lucky. We've got new pro coming on. We do. We have, we've got, we have worked on, yeah. on ways to get industrial, industrial money, commercial money in town, and I just think there does have to be a balance. There yep. is a need for housing. So Absolutely. I just like to look at where, where housing and, property and would business, be available. So business development. Would you be in favor of putting a committee together to be looking at that or is this I think so we're either, either work with open space you know okay. uh, open space committee to say you know that yes it's important to do these and there's a couple other lots that they had been working on too kind of by the river and obviously our farmland is so valuable and as farmland flood plain, you we're know. not yeah there's certain floodplains that we're not looking to do I just I'm curious is there any lots available or is there a plan for down the road to to see some growth in the right. community um, if not, we're just going to have to figure other ways to yeah. try and pay the bill because it doesn't and get I, cheaper to run a town every year. It's just yeah. more restrictions, more you know requirements, and it just everything costs more. So, well, that's a, the yeah. hope of um, one of the things that Sharon Pachork and I talked about was she's saying that there are a lot of seniors. I have a senior on yes. River Road, and I have a senior on Hillside Road, North Hillside. They'd like to be downtown. Yeah. You know, they they don't feel you know they're in their 80s, you know. Mm -hmm. So if they open up the home, either to pass it on to the next yes. generation of the family, mm -hmm. or they sell it to somebody who's looking for a home, to raise I know that family. our, our yep. EMS chief has been looking for a house in the surrounding area and just can't find one that's, yep. you know, so. Affordable. Yeah, um, no, it's true that this, this kind of project here would free up some houses, hopefully. Yeah. If not even in our town, but locally around yeah. us, that could if it had could support or Waitley this. Or yeah, Sunderland it's or, it's all regional. Yeah, so a Conway. Yep. Um, you know. So. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> like that. I just wanted to clarify because there was a question about uh, other parcels that Open Space Committee had been considering. Uh, so there was two other parcels that were originally under consideration. One of those is part of this kind of larger town forest area, and that's what's called Steam Mill Forest. Mm -hmm. And that's basically sort of, if you're looking out from Pocumtuck Rock, it's the very steep cliff under you. Yep. <laughs> um, it's not really you know, usable because it's all just, you know, the steep side of the mountain. Right. Um, but that had been considered. And then also uh, there's a small parcel along the Deerfield River kind of off what's called Martin's Falls Road. Yes. Um, it's, it's kind of blocked off currently by uh, a dike and also by the fact that the river has just shifted a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. certainly, you know, the Open Space Committee have been looking at, hey, is there some way to provide riverfront access here? Um, so for the moment, uh, you know, what we talked about with Julie Caswell, the, the chair was holding off on putting those under Article 97, and that okay. is purely because with the Stillwater Bridge project, mm -hmm. we may well need to have some article, some land some to put land. into Article 97 to compensate what we're taking. That's a great uh, thought. So for yep. the moment, we're holding off on okay. those. But that makes sense. They're obviously not in any danger of being developed. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's one, the story one of them there. Is is in the floodplain. Yes, so, uh, yeah, very much so. And yeah. uh, the, the, the reason why we need to have land, currently DCR owns land that abuts the Stillwater Bid Bridge and it extends into the center of the river. And we have to, what's the multiple? Is it three times or is it two times the acreage? I, I can't remember what they yeah, require. It, <laughs> but in any case, if it's a one acre lot, we have to come up with either two or three acres of land and we have to give DCR that land somewhere else and mm -hmm. so hopefully the one that's uh that's um along the deerfield river would be would be enough to satisfy that requirement mm -hmm. and then open space could come back to get the cliff face yeah designated um okay. but 
All right. That's great. Um, and then the final thing, of, of course, we don't have anything to do with this one. It's a citizen's petition on electronic voting, and mm -hmm. uh, that will be the final article on the warrant. And they, they pick the language? Is that the idea? I, I, as far as I know, this is what they wrote. Um, okay. And uh, uh, so just like last year, we had a, another citizen's petition about 16 and 17-year-olds voting. Uh, that was, mm -hmm. we didn't write it. We didn't right. say anything about it. It's just on the warrant because okay. it met the criteria. Sure. So um, if we're all in agreement, I'd take a motion to close the warrant um, again. And Cause we don't have it. to make any changes. And Did we make any changes? No. I think we, we have some Scrivener's things that uh, they're going to handle. Yeah, there's, okay. yeah, there's a question about free cash versus, right. yeah, yeah, but right. that's, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'll make a motion to close the warrant. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So the reason why we had to close it is we have to get this posted by the 20th um, to meet the requirements for the number of days preceding a special town meeting. So um, the actual motions will be developed in the interim. And um, the Finance Committee will have a chance to weigh in on the various articles and uh, make their recommendations. Um, so thanks. This was a good discussion. Yep. Yep, for sure. Um, <clears throat> next up is Treehouse Brewing Company noise complaints. And um, I put this on the, the agenda just because the concerts have ended for the year. The last one was on the 12th. Um, we have uh, Valerie Bird, our, house, our health agent, was took data over th five concerts, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, she got to, she borrowed a state uh, certified decibel meter and so forth. I want to suggest that, uh, like the first week after the national election, that we invite the residents of town to come down and talk about mm -hmm. tree houses. The, pros and cons of Treehouse, pros and cons of the concerts, um, so that you know we can get a sense of where the community is about uh, the issues that are um, both beneficial and troublesome. Mm -hmm. And um, in the back of that, we will also be following the path that we've talked about before, which is looking at um, what enforcement mechanisms we have as a town to try to address noise concerns that people have. In particular, try to get um, zoning special permits, uh, bylaws, the DEP state noise regulations, and figure out how do they all fit together and do we have a mechanism to get agreement from Treehouse about next season's concerts, like mm -hmm. no concerts during school, uh, you know, et cetera. Whatever, whatever restrictions we can to address the, the legitimate concerns of the people that live closest to this uh, this venue. Mm -hmm. um, so Sounds good. I, um, I just wanted to, I, we have to say it in a public meeting, and so um, since we had heard from the residents at the previous meeting, I wanted to follow up and say this is another step I'd like to take to give people an opportunity to talk about it so that there's no two-minute, you know, right restriction and, and uh, mm -hmm. we can have people who say I go to three concerts a year I love it and we have people who say I live on Captain Lathrop and I really would like it to be quieter mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so and and let everybody talk you know because mm -hmm. I think having a conversation with our neighbors is a good thing yeah um, <clears throat> any thoughts on that I no. agree with that I agree looking forward that. to it yep finding a solution for people and again, I think that it's make sure that the residents know that this is the time to come in and give us all the information that you have because there's different residents have different complaints. And right. let's get them all in here so that we can try to address everything that comes before us. Um, because again, I was out there three or four nights and trying to figure out what was what. And um, again, uh, being new at this, it's basically what do we have what are our, what's our authority to be able to handle this? Mm -hmm. And okay. not only that, um, see if we can come to a conclusion where we, Treehouse can still hold their concerts, but they can do it in a, uh, a manner that's not going to affect the rest of the town, the rest of the residents, especially in the center of town, and even the ones that are on the outskirts that are, 
feeling it. Not, it's not just noise, because I was always hearing about vibration. It wasn't the noise, but it just about vibrated me out of the bed. So those are the things that I want to make sure that everybody comes in and talks about, not just the noise complaint, yep. but all the rest of it that went with it. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's interesting because I know of one resident who had made mention of, of noise one night, then there was another concert, didn't hear a peep. Then she didn't really hear the noise, but she felt the vibration. So it's, it's different nights, it's different things, and what we need to figure out is how do we, how do we help everyone you know, minimize the impacts. Um, <clears throat> so um, as far as this next one, the, the Finance Committee has been working hard to develop their ideas for financial policies. Um, Casey turned this over to us just the week that she uh, retired, and um, I think with the short staffing and everything, I'd like to get you know some outside input into you know whether these policies make sense, um, you know, and, and get some advice to the select board about uh, and before you guys come and present to us, just so we can look at are there unintended consequences to any of these things? Um, do we want more flexibility if we're thinking about percentages? So. I've asked Christopher and, and Greg to think about how we could get free advice, <laughs> um, if, it, if such a thing exists, or if we could get a grant to have somebody who has this expertise give us advice. Um, so hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks we'll learn a little bit more about what's available to us. Um, but realistically, I don't see this happening until we get a TA um, and uh, you know, get past special town meeting, get past the national election. So again, I'm thinking maybe early November we would maybe do this. Um, but I really appreciate the fact that uh, the, the Finance Committee puts in a lot of work and thinks about these things really carefully. And so I just want to say thank you. Um, Liquor license? Yeah, you let's do that. Motion? Uh, um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, three one-day liquor licenses for um, uh, Yankee Candle Village. Uh, this would be for October 12th, uh, 13th, and 14th for the Pumpkin Palooza event. This is a three day fall event at Yankee Candle Village happening on Columbus Day weekend. Normal store hours are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're looking for um, a one day license for each of the three days to allow beer and wine from um, uh, Powder Hollow uh, into the courtyard where the band will be playing. And they have all the um, application filled out, insurances, and all that. So I'll make a motion to approve those uh, three one-day liquor licenses. Second. Yeah, uh, this is pretty standard stuff. Um, yep. And Yankee Candles really, really got this down to a science. They do. So um, if there's no other discussion, uh, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Do we need to sign anything? Okay. Uh, yeah, he's got yes. the signature. Okay, so we didn't. Is there anything else that we need to talk about tonight, Chris uh, and Greg? Uh, do you have any reports or anything? You, do, you already did your reports. I don't, I don't think we've actually welcomed Greg, have we? Formally to a select board meeting? I can't well, remember. Well, let's welcome Greg Snedeker, yeah. our assistant town administrator. He's a nearby resident in Gill, um, and uh, he's also a select board member in Gill. Um, he's also a member of the a vice chair of the Franklin Regional Council of Governments uh, Policy Committee or something. I don't know, what's well, the, on the council. On the council. On the council. Um, so he's got a lot of experience on different levels of county government and town government and um, we the, uh, the excuse I'm going to use is you already feel like you're part of the team so I, it, you feel like you're, you're normal he, normally here so uh, I, I just love having you here I love your personality you're cheerful and um, you're looking to get things done you even fixed our sound we've been dealing with forever. I know what do people think that? about the sound tonight right Woo! <laughs> Woo! I mean sometimes it's too noisy free bird I'll just um, say, you know, thank you. I mean, I've, I've, I have felt very welcomed, so uh, not, not a surprise coming to Deerfield. And, uh, you know, I'm just very happy to be here and very happy that we have uh, Christopher Dunn here to help, you know, help guide me in all this. So I know it's we wonderful. have a little bit of a shakeup, but 
yeah I'm really happy that it. he's here to help steer the ship so yeah, Greg I wanted yeah, I, to I wanted to welcome you for and thank you for stepping in or stepping in it and coming <laughs> on board so yeah that's that's one way of putting it um, so that if there's nothing else um, do you have anything else Chris uh, we just had a couple uh, other items on there so I believe there's a River Wild oh, right. uh, yep yep do you want to talk us through that or Greg oh, right. we do have an uh, yeah. I, I, yeah I believe you'll have an email from Chris Curtis in your packet there yes um, I do remember that just reminding everyone you know they were seeking grant funding uh, you know they, they received the funding and now they're looking for um, a representative from the town who would be interested in, in working on this project uh, Julie Caswell from open space has uh, you know volunteered yeah no and um, Julie has been uh, amazing at, they've revitalized the open space committee as you can see mm -hmm. with all the all the actions that are bringing forward for us to consider lands protections etc um, I know she walks the Pocumtic regularly and uh, um, she seems to me like a, a great candidate for you know filling this this role um, it's advising on um, potentially developing the part of the Deerfield that's in this oh, scenic and wild designation is that mm -hmm. so um, yep. Do we need to make a motion? Yes. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve Julie Caswell to be, be the Deerfield representative for the um, River Wild representative on the Deerfield uh, Wild and Scenic River Designation Committee. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. 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 Go ahead. No. <clears throat> go ahead. You, were, you had to go aye. Oh, I. Yeah, Thank I'm you. I. <laughs> I had a question on me. The, <laughs> I. <laughs> um, I had a question, I, I guess, on the warrant again. When do you need that signed by us? Because I don't know if we have a meeting before the date you need to post it, or do you need us to come in and just wet sign uh, when you're? Yeah, um, I mean, we could. You could sign it tonight if you wanted. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do it tonight. Yeah, let's do it tonight. That yeah. way, if you know, I mean, even if you've got to adjust it a bit you know we can we can come back in and sign another if needed but i think it's pretty close to there so right i think uh, there's we can sign that last page and then if you need to make adjustments scrivener yep. note adjustments let's do that so yep. maybe you want to print off one of, it's not in there right yeah uh yeah i handed out copies but i think we're going to need um uh, a plain one <clears throat> here yep and then I think there's a, there's a there's no, a no, no. I, I handed them out um, but right. I, you know I can print out some more and we can this one yeah if, yeah if, if, yeah and then we should vote the posting as well um, we have to turn them over this one is clean yeah, yeah. So okay so let's do that let's use this um, one. do we need more than one so it's it's five copies I'm not sure if you've usually just we I think we usually sign one think we sign one but, okay uh, yeah. I think what what's gonna happen is um, Cassie is going to put together um, all of them to sign. There'll be a very formal one that goes in the book, and then all the others to be um, posted at, at the uh, five places. So I'd make a motion to sign the warrant, and then uh, hereby direct uh, to serve direct to serve this warrant by posting up attested copies thereof at five public places in said town, uh, 14 days um, at least before the uh, holding of said meeting hereof fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doing thereon uh, to the town clerk at the time and place of said meeting given under our hands this 18th day of September in the year 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great. And then we can pop in and sign when she gets the five ready to go because we're going to need five to sign. Yeah, we can sign it tonight, and that way yep. it's signed, and and then she can get those going yeah. for us. And to we'll come, come and back sign in five. I just wanted to catch that before it goes too far. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Oops, sorry.
Anything else? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank the you nice thing work. about the select board meetings is that they're already one scheduled for two weeks from now, and uh, we don't have to figure out a date and do a Google <laughs> poll and all that stuff. So um, if there's nothing else, I'd take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Really appreciate having people in the audience.